It's a real dead end. Hello, folks. Welcome back to our show reviews. Today, I'm going to be reviewing the book, A Shocker on Shock Street. Number 35 from OG62. Wow, the front cover is so amazing. I love it. And I love it so much so that I actually chose this picture as my as my uh, this uh, illustration from Goosebumps as my profile picture uh, for this channel. This is how much I love it. It is my profile picture because I think that there's something that really stands out about this front cover, especially this John Mantis. You know, this John Bug that is kind of crushing everything that stands on its way. You have a car there. You know, it's going down the street. There's a big sign that reads Shock Street. There's uh, uh, this uh, street light, you know, and uh, this, uh, uh, yes, you know, on top of it's of the of this uh, post, you know, we have this uh, the street light, uh, and uh, basically, yes, it sounds like this uh, scary mantis is about to dismantle it and destroy it. Man, that is so good. And I really love the choice of colors, especially, you know, the sun that is setting. You know, you have a lot of yellow as it as it as it is implied by uh the sun setting as I mentioned. So, um the sky is kind of has that orange tint with some purple in it and some red. Man, I, I think that's so beautiful. Such a beautiful sunset and uh <laughs> Down, the, down that street, and the street itself is pretty good, too. You have some big houses, mansions, you know. I I really love this so much, yeah. Also, the traffic light, yes, uh, yeah, um, yeah, the traffic light there is uh, also the colors, like red and yellow, are kind of reflected by the, the, by the sky, and man, I love it so much. And the mantis, you know, this uh, these eyes, this open mouth. Yeah, this uh, this this open mouth. It's so open mouth. It is so good. And now uh, you have its red tongue that is uh, inside, and it is also reflected by the by the, by the great choice of by the great choice of colors in the background. I love it so much, man. <laughs> I could speak about that front cover for hours, or. Yeah, for hours on end, and or and uh, still have so much to say. But uh, since I'm reviewing this book, I'm gonna move on to the book itself, and maybe I'll say a few other things about it um, as I'm about to conclude the review. But uh, I really want to get get on with the story, right? So let's get into it. What is this book about? So basically, you have two friends. I mean, characters named uh, Aaron Wright. And her best friend is Marty, and basically they love scary movies. They go attend, uh, they go watch scary movies uh, in uh, in theaters. And uh, basically, what happens is that um, I believe that they they saw so many they saw so many scary movies that they don't get scared anymore, or not that scared e easily. So they kind of uh, you know try to freak each other out you know, as a way to keep each other on the edge of their toes, you know, in order to, you know, really get scared and all that. And they really love, and they really love to be scared. They really love to get scared. And uh, basically, um, I believe it's Aaron's father, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Mr. Wright is kind of uh, a scary movie, uh... I'm not sure if he's a director, uh, but he's actually some kind of a designer, right? He kind of designs, uh, yeah, I, I believe that's what he does. He kind of designs monsters and things like that and uh, robots and, you know, things like that. Uh, those villains and uh, the, the those creatures and those villains that appear in scary movies. So that's actually how they get to, you know, attend... Uh, uh, you know, uh, scary movies, you know, uh, as soon as they're released, you know, they kind of get this VIP treatment, and, uh, they kind of, uh, watch them, uh, they, they would watch the premiere of, uh, any scary movie, uh, because, uh, because of their father's, uh, 
influence in the industry. So that's, uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it. So that's pretty much how it begins. But then the father has an announcement to make. And he's like, uh, he designed uh, uh, some kind of a theme park. You know, kind of like uh, One Day at Horrorland. Really similar to this. Really, really similar to this book. Yeah, this book has a lot of uh, similarities with uh, One Day at Horrorland. And uh, that's for the best because this book, One Day at Horrorland, was awesome as well. But this book is, uh, yeah, so basically he, he has this, uh, he's in charge of uh, animatronic robots, you know, animatronic robots inside this, uh, this park. And basically they're going to go there for a whole day. And uh, they're so excited about it, they can't believe it. So basically uh, they're going to go to this, uh, to this place that is kind of uh, a recreation of uh, Shock Street, right? And uh, Shock Street, uh, for those of you who don't know, is kind of a a movie franchise, if I'm not mistaken, kind of like a, a movie series, whatever you want to call it. And basically what happens is uh, that uh, there are all kinds of monsters in, uh, in these movies. You have the Giant Mantis, you have uh, a few others. I don't remember each one of them. Uh, let me try to see here. Um... Um, yeah, a uh, wolf boy, a uh, wolf girl, and uh, other, 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 other folks like them, uh, other creatures like them, sorry about that. So yeah, basically they're going to go uh, to that place and uh, that, that's going to be pretty good and that's going to be pretty good and pretty interesting. I don't know if I mentioned that, but uh, they're pretty excited about it because they're going to be able to meet all the villains that they've been that they've been watching on, on TV for so long. They've been watching them on TV for so long, so they're so excited about it. They, hi they, they hyped about it. Yeah, they're hyper excited about it. And uh, they're going to uh, finally they're going to have the opportunity to go and uh, just, uh, you know, be in uh, their element, right? Be in, in the setting of the movies itself. Yeah. Uh, be in the set, in the set, in uh, in the movie set itself, because I believe that this is where uh, the movies are being uh, directed and uh, produced. So they're so they're so happy about that. It's gonna be they're gonna have a blast, right? And they're gonna have uh, <laughs> they're gonna have the time of their lives, man. And uh, basically, as soon as they arrive there, everything seems to be doing okay. It's kind of like any amusement park, theme park, whatever you want to call it. And uh, so they're gonna be boarding this car, kind of like a, a roller coaster kind of car thing. And uh, basically, this car is gonna take them to all kinds of places. And at some point, it's, it's even picking up speed, if I'm not mistaken. So it's gonna go pretty fast and uh, pretty fast. And uh, everything seems to be doing okay at first. Um, but then something weird happens, something, some strange things are starting to happen, and uh, this whole, this whole ride is getting a little bit too scary. The, the monsters and uh, everything that is there seems a little bit, it seems a little bit too real, to, even to them. So they start to question it, to question uh, what is happening there, and uh, what is the problem. And uh, they start to second guess their um, their decision to be in that park in the first place, and they start thinking that maybe it wasn't such a maybe it wasn't such a good idea after all. So they decide to at some point get off the the ride, but uh, it doesn't happen exactly uh, like yeah, it's not exactly a good thing uh, to do. You know, getting off the Getting off your ride, you know, in the middle of a park, and at some point they get ambushed, even, and uh, they end up in a cave and a cemetery near the end. Are so many great adventures. I really love this book so much. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's pretty much how it goes. And uh, I, I forgot to mention, but in the beginning they're given, uh, they're given, uh, if I'm not mistaken, um, two two weapons. And uh, maybe I could find it here. Um, um, what is it exactly? Um, kind of like two two guns, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, 
Linda, who is actually their tour guide uh, at the beginning, uh, um, she actually tells them uh, that uh, this is uh, uh, those are weapons that they should use to protect them, to protect themselves, uh, to protect themselves, and to, to fend off an intruder. But but they don't really believe that those are true. Like uh, those are the real deal. Like they think it's just a game. It's just part of the of of the scary thing. You know, of the thing to scare them. It's just part of uh, yeah the um, this whole you know um, this whole adventure. They think they don't think much of them. They think those are just you know those are just toys or something like that or fake, whatever, squirt guns, but they don't do anything. And then they're going to use them, obviously. I don't want to tell you exactly what it is because I don't want to spoil anything. But basically, yeah, they end up in a, in a lot of different places, you know, all throughout this ride, uh, namely um, the Cave of the Living Creep. The Cave of the Living Creep, which is uh, this big cave I was telling you about. Uh, so there's the cemetery. Um... Shuffler's House of Shocks, Shuffler's House of Shocks, um, and, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's, uh, pretty much it, I guess, I don't want to spoil the book too much, anything, I'm gonna move, move on, and, uh, to my thoughts in a minute, but I'm just making sure I haven't forgotten anything important, uh, yeah, at some point, they, oh, yeah, they, they, they are, they, they find, they find themselves, uh, yeah, face to face with with a uh, with a group of zombies. That was pretty good, pretty scary. Uh, there's the gen, there's the giant praying mantis scene, or is it like? I think there were several. I think there was. I think I think there were several uh, giant praying mantises, uh, giant praying mantises according to the Goosebumps fan website. And uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. Also, the oh yeah, there there were also some giant spiders. Um, if you watch the Harry Potter movies, uh, the Harry Potter movie, uh, I believe it was, I believe it's, uh, Harry Potter and the, and the Chamber of Secrets, uh, yeah, it's basically the same vibe, you know, with giant spiders, tarantulas, and stuff like this, tarantulas, tarantulas, and, uh, yeah, that's, uh, I guess that's pretty much it, and, uh, so, yeah, that's, at some point, they go inside the house also at the beginning, if I'm not mistaken. And, uh, yeah, they they board that ride, that, uh, yeah, that tram, that tram, that's what it, what it is referred as in, uh, in the Goosebumps Phantom website. And, yeah, that's pretty much it. Now, the, the final twist really blew me away. I didn't see that coming. It really surprised me. It surprised me a lot. And it surprised a lot of Goosebumps, uh, uh, a lot of Goosebumps readers, a lot of Goosebumps fans. I didn't see that coming, and it was really good. Like, it was genius, like, uh, good. I really liked this book a lot. So now, I'm going to move on to, the, to my personal opinion on this book, now that I spoke about it. So, love this book. Awesome. Erin, and uh, I believe that's her name, if I'm not mistaken. Let me check just to make sure. Yeah, Erin Wright and uh, her best friend Marty are really enjoyable characters. I really like them. They're cool and everything, and uh, they remind us about, um, you know, those teenagers who like to be, who like being scared, who like watching scary movies, you know, in the dark, <laughs> as uh, and uh, you know, trying to freak each other out, you know. Trying to make each other, you know, trying to make each other scream. That was good. That was good. The setting is amazing. It's so awesome. Like Michael Goosebumps uh, mentioned, it, it is a lot like uh, One Day at Horrorland, number 16 from OG62. It is really similar. I agree with that. I agree with that statement. It is. It, it has a lot of similar elements to One Day at Horror Land, but at the same time, it's kind of its own book, because there are also a lot of other different things in this book, as, uh, as opposed to One Day at Horror Land, which was really good too, but this one, man, it, 
It is so awesome. It is as good. It is as great. If not better than One Day at Horror Land. I'm not entirely sure. But uh, it was awesome. This book. I loved it so much. I loved it so much. I loved it so much. I can't emphasize it enough, man. I love it. I love the Shocker on Shock Street. I love the Shocker on Shock Street. And then I remember, yeah, Shocker on Shock Street is actually kind of similar to uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. For those of you who have, uh, who who got the pun, you know, or the the similarities between the titles, I'm, I'm mentioning that right now. So yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty much like a uh, similar concept. Uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. And uh, Shock on Shock Street. So yeah, that's pretty good. And also this book had some similarities with uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Dr. Horse home video. Or was it called something else? Let me just check uh, just to make sure. Uh, it, it's a short story from uh, Tales to Give You Goosebumps. I don't remember which one. I think it was the second one. Uh... Uh, one second. Sorry about that. Should have I should have been more prepared, but uh, it's kind of it's kind of similar to this book, uh, a little bit. Yeah, Doctor Horse House of Video, from uh, More Tales to Give You Goosebumps. Uh, for More Tales to Give You Goosebumps, yeah. Uh, More Tales to Give You Goosebumps is basically the second uh book from the Tales to Give You Goosebumps series. And, uh, yeah, it is very similar to this book with the monsters and everything. And uh, if you haven't read this, uh, that, that short novel, that short story, uh, I'd, I, I would really recommend you to read that short story. And, uh, yeah, I would recommend you to read that short story, possibly before this one or after this one. It's up to you, really. Uh, but, yeah, this book, I would definitely recommend it. I would definitely recommend you to read it. I loved it so much. I, I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, uh, I, I'm totally, uh, excited about it, about recommending it to you, recommending it to you. I'm so excited to recommend it to you and, uh, to explain why I love this book as much as I did. But yeah, the monsters, the concepts, the, the fear element is very much in this book. You know, the scary elements are there. You know, it's scary. It gets, uh, it, it gets tense. It gets suspenseful right from the beginning. You know, right off the bat. You know, straight from the beginning. Uh, right at the beginning, it gets scary very, very quickly. And this is something I really like about Goosebumps books is when, uh, you know, you know, uh, Stan doesn't, doesn't waste time, you know, with uh, red herrings and stuff like this. No, he just gets into it. Uh, as soon as he begins the book, as soon as he begins writing the book, he starts, uh, he starts off, uh, by giving us, you know, a scary novel. So this book definitely did the job. And I loved it so much. It is so good. And, uh, I would definitely recommend it to, especially to, uh, any fans of the, uh, of uh, any any horror movie or scary movie fans, and uh, yeah, I guess that's pretty much it. Also, if you read uh, One Day at Horrorland and you love this book and you love that book, I would definitely recommend you to read this book. I would definitely recommend uh, this book to you because it was really good. And honestly, it uh, it gives One Day at Horrorland a run for its money. It, it gives, it gives, it gives, uh, one day at Horrorland a run for its money. Yeah, it really does. Yeah, this book, one day at Horrorland, yeah, it, it was, it was awesome, too. I really loved it. But this book, it was awesome as well. I don't even know which one is better, but yeah, I'd say that. A Shock on South Street. Yeah. It gave one day at Horrorland a run for its money. And, uh, I think I'm gonna stop it there. I mean, I think I'm gonna... I think I'm going to conclude right there, right here. And uh, I'll finish with the summary. Don't listen to it if you don't want to be spoiled. If you don't want to, if you don't want to have the story spoiled, don't read the, don't, don't, don't listen to the summary. But uh, I don't think it really spoils. But uh, yeah, just so you know, 
I'll do it at the end, as I usually do, at the very end of this review. But, uh, yeah, now let's move on to my rating of this book, because I keep repeating myself, and I think it's probably getting a little bit uh, uh, annoying. <laughs> and I apologize for that. It's just that this book really, it really, really, I really, really loved it. Yeah, it really made me happy and uh, so good. It, it made me... I felt so good reading this book. I can't even I can't even tell you how much I loved it. Well, actually, I kind of did, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's it's it was amazing. It was amazing, an amazing great book. So if I were to give that book a rating, I'd give it nine point five ten. It was such an amazing book. I would definitely recommend it, and uh, I recommend you to read it. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for me. 9.5 out of 10 for A Shock on Shock Street. A Shock on Shock Street deserves 9.5 out of 10 according to me on a, on a 1 to 10 uh, rating uh, uh, basis. I'd give it 9.5. So that's it, folks. Uh, what about you? Did you like A Shock on Shock Street? <clears throat> sorry about that. I keep messing up. I'm so sorry about this. Let me try that again. What, what, folks, what did you think about A Shocker on Shock Street? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Let me know in the comment section down below about what you thought about A Shocker on Shock Street, because I'd love to hear about your views and your opinions on the book. And, uh, and, uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching, and, uh, I'll see you next time for the next review. And, uh, see you later, and, uh, take care, and, uh, goodbye. Thank you so much for watching, and, uh, and uh, I'll see you next time. Thank you. The social reviews for you signing off. Talk about shock treatment. Aaron Wright and her best friend Morty love horror movies. Especially shock on shock street movies. All kinds of scary creatures slay them. All kinds of scary creatures. All kinds of. All kinds of. All kinds of scary creatures live, live on shock street. All kinds of scary. All kinds of scary. Sorry about that. Let me let me do it again. I'm 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 re I really apologize for that. I just uh, you know I'm still not exactly you know, um uh, you know familiar with the summary. But uh, yeah, I I really apologize for that. I'll try that again now. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much for uh, your patience, and uh, I apologize for that one last time. Talk about shock treatment. Aaron Wright and her best friend Marty love horror movies, especially Shock on Shock Street movies. All kinds of scary creatures live, live on Shock Street. All kinds of scary creatures live on Shock Street. The Tordinator. The Toadinator. Ape Face. The Mad Mangler. But when Aaron, but when Aaron and Marty vis, visit the new scary... But, but when Aaron and Marty visit the new Shocker Studio theme park, they get the scare of their lives. First, their, first their tram gets stuck in the Cave of the Living Creeps. Then they're attacked by a group of enormous praying mantises. Real life is a whole lot scarier than the movies. But Shock Street isn't really... But Shock Street isn't really real. Is it? <laughs>